Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about four problems from the latest Code Chef May Cook Off and uh, Division Three. We'll talk about the four problems. Okay. The first problem is Farmers League. So the problem statement goes like this: that a football league of n teams is taking place. So there are n teams that are playing a football match where each team plays with another team in a single round, uh, round robin fashion. Okay, a a team gets three points for winning a game and zero for losing. Okay, then uh, what is the maximum possible difference of points between the winning and the second team? Sec so first team and the second team, what is the maximum difference they can get to? Okay, so there are different uh, examples we can take. Let us take this example as well so that it will become more clear to you. Let us say that there are two teams of name A and B. Now because there is only one match between them, one will win. Now it is also said that. Whatever team will win, it will get three points, and whatever team will lose, it will get zero points. So let's say that A wins, so A will get three points, and B will get zero points. So the total difference between the first and the second team is three, for like n equal to two. So for n equal to two, the answer is three. Okay. Now let us talk about. Uh, we have three teams. So we have three teams. Now in this, what you can see here is that if every team Like plays with every team. Let's say the like uh, the A team, uh, whenever play a match with any other team, will always win because we want the first team and the second team. So the first team we want that it will win with every uh, every other team. So let's say that A win with every other team. So if there are let's say n teams and A then play with n minus one teams because obviously uh, if there are n teams, then the other teams accept from A there are n minus more members are there. So The A team will win n minus one times, and for that it will get three score. Okay, that is fine. Now for the other part, what will happen is that now we have the other teams left. So let's say that this is for two. Let us take for five. Okay, we have A, B, C, D, and E. Now A has won when like when A has played with all the other teams. A has already won, so A has won like uh, n minus one times. So n minus one times A has won, so it has got three. Into n minus one score, so four times it has won, so four into three, that is twelve score that has got. Now we have these four teams. Now these four teams will play among each other. So B will play with C, D and E. Then C will play with D and E, and D will play with E. Okay, so these are the matches. Now we want the second team, so like the second place team. So for every match, like whenever like two matches happen, for a team it can like win or lose. Now for what we can do here is that. We can say that for any team, like for any team, it whatever number of matches it plays, it will win half the matches and lose half the matches. Why? Because see, if we let any single team lose, so let's say that we have some B team, C team, and D team. Okay. Now what will happen is that if we want the D team to only win, then what will happen is that obviously that D team will win against B and C. But then the D score will be very high, among like because if we are get the leaderboard, then let's say A score is twelve, and then D D obviously won in the two in the two matches, among like A B C D E. So let's say E is also there. Now E plays with D, E E plays with C, E plays with B, and E won with all the three matches. So it will get nine score, and so the difference between them is three. But that's not the correct answer. We can get it more uh, larger. How we can get that? We can just say that uh, we want to increase the difference between the first scoring team and the second scoring team. In that scenario, if the second teams win every other match, then obviously this team will get a higher score, and this difference will become small. But we want to maximize the difference, and thus what we can do is that this team can win half the matches because if it wins less than half the matches, then obviously. uh like it will not be a second team it will be in the like ne at any other team because the any other team will have won more than half matches and that will come ahead if we have seen that if any team like won more than half matches and it obviously will come close to a so it's like the middle part is that any team like all the other teams that we have whenever they play among each other every team let's say for this team it has like three players so in like uh, or like in half of the matches it win and half of the matches it doesn't win and that's what we going to do here So now we have the maximum team score and the second maximum team score. We just like subtract out the difference, and whatever is the answer, that's the overall logic. So that's the overall logic here. I'll take out to 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 quote part now. So what I've done here is 
that for the first team it is 3 into n minus 1 because 3 into like number of uh, like matches they have won among all the other teams that is n minus n minus 1 team and the other part was that how many teams are left now n minus 2 are left because now let's say that now e is playing among among how many teams n minus 2 because this has played already with a and that they have lost so there are n minus 2 teams are left so among n minus 2 half of them win so divide by 2 and they will win half of them so into 3 and we just subtract out this value from the total value and that's the overall difference and we want to like maximize it that's the overall answer okay the second problem is game of books so uh, you have seen like a chessboard now in chessboard they have introduced one more type of uh, like you can say a character or chess character that is called pook now pook is the combination or had the quality of rook and a pawn now you know what is a rook and pawn I, I, i'll tell you now if you have seen the chessboard Uh, so rook has the property to move in all the like in all the four directions in the same uh, Same row or same column. So if let's say that if you put a rook in this position that then it can move in any of the blocks in the same row and the same column Okay, that is what rook can move and pawn can move only one block in this direction this direction in this direction Okay, so uh, now what it is given here is that you have to place some number of pooks in an n cross n grid and you just have to tell that how many number of books like maximum number of books you can place okay so for this problem what you can do is let us try to like fill books so for only n cross 1 like n cross n grid we have so let us n equal to 1 so n 1 cross 1 so it is only one board so i can put one book here so for n cross 1 or for n equal to 1 we have one answer for n equal to let's say 2 we can put one book here now we cannot put put a pook here pook here or here because obviously this in the same row same column and this if i put a pook here they will cancel out each other like this pook will attack this other so we have to put out the pooks in this board such that they should not be attacking each other okay then that is also bad so i can only put one pook this cannot be possible so in two by crew also i can put one pook in three by three i can let's say i put a pook here then i cannot put a pook here 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 as well as here because if i put a pook here then it will like attack this so i can put let's say a pook here if i put a pook here i cannot put a pook here and here so answer for this is two so for this is the answer is one for this is the answer is also one now for the other pook let's say it's equal to four now for four what you can say is that now the problems actually boils down to a very standard problem that is the n cross n queen problem i'll tell you how so let's say that if I put a pook here, then I cannot put a pook in this direction also in the same, like in the same row. And I can put, cannot put a pook here as well as I cannot put a pook here because like if I put a pook here, then this will attack this. If I put a pook here, it will like this will attack this. So both of them are not possible. So, okay. So these are also not possible. So I will put a pook here. If I put a pook here, I cannot put it on this line. I cannot put it here. I can so I can put only here then I cannot put uh, I cannot put a pook here also so for any n greater than equal to 4 I can put n pooks okay so why because like it is somewhat if you have seen the n cross n placing out n queens in the chessboard in an n cross n chessboard such that they don't cancel out each other in those positions only we can put the pooks also because as you can see that if I put a pook here all of those positions are like also invalid this also invalid which is some sort of a same thing for queen also so if i and because in the n cross n queen problem we can put n queens in the n cross n chessboard so that is why we can put n books in the same n cross n chessboard so the answer for this is that for i can show you the code but now for n equal to one or n equal to two the answer is one only for n equal to three the answer is two and for any greater than n equal greater than equal to four the answer is like n only because we can put n books in the n cross n like code that's the answer for the second problem let us move on to the third problem. Okay. The third problem is very, very easy. It states that you are given an n integers like this. Determine whether the, you can reorder these n integers such that the pair of consecutive differences differ by a factor of 2. So if you like can somehow rearrange these numbers such that the pair of consecutive differences like differ by a factor of 2. Now what you can see here is that they are they have given that like at least any one of these conditions can hold true Which means that if you find a difference between the i-th and the i-th minus 1 element 
then it should be a factor of i and the i plus one element the difference between them or the difference between i plus one and i is equal to the twice into difference of i into i minus one so it should be either a factor of on either side on like on, on either side now that's the whole problem now what you can see here is like what you can directly observe is like whatever sequence we have we want a factor so whenever we want a factor let's say that if i have one then the next number is let's say two the difference between them is equal to one now the next number should be such that the difference like the difference between them should be such that it should be a factor of two of the previous difference so the previous difference is one so the next difference should be factor of two that is two so this is two so this is should be four and now if the difference between these two is let's say two so the next factor should be let's say equal to two into two that is equal to four so the difference between them should be eight so what you can directly see is that the like the like the total uh number should be in the increasing order only so the only possible way to place out or rearrange this number should be in a sorted order only so what you can do is that you can like first sort out all the numbers that you have in the array and then you can just check out whether both or any one of these conditions are holding true for the particular uh, like uh, pairs that you are forming okay and then if any of the condition is true for the sorted array then the answer is fine and the answer is false so i'll take it on to the code part as well so what i've done here is that you can like first sort it out so that dot dot like that's the solve function you can like uh, insert all the elements and then sort out the elements from increasing order and then you can move from ith element like i equal to one till the second last element you can just check, like find out the difference between the i and the i minus one and the i and i plus one so these are the two differences of the two elements that you have now if either of the conditions hold true then the answer is perfectly fine if either the either one of the conditions doesn't hold true then the answer is no you just return out at this point because if any one of the at any point you find out the glitch you will like return uh, false that is no else if all the perfect string that you have like the perfect uh, array that you have is falling either of the two conditions the answer is yes okay that's the third problem now the fourth problem different sub array rearrangements so uh, this problem states that you are given an array of n integers a1 till an and you did have to determine that whether there are two permutations of a like can you form two permutations from the array that you have b and c such that those permutations hold a particular condition now the condition is that there should exist a pair of integers i and j and i and j should not be from 1 till n like it can be less than 1 till n such that the sub array from i till j is a permutation like for the sub array of i to j is a permutation of sub array of like uh so uh what it said that it does like there doesn't exist a pair sorry if there doesn't exist a pair i and j such that if you take out any sub array from b as well as sub array from c they should not be of the same permutation type and that's the whole problem i'll tell you with the example don't worry so i'll let us take them for an example so you have let's say the like the last example that is working fine so one two three one two three so what they have said is One two three, one two three. Now one two three, one two three. They have formed two permutations. So you have an array. Let's say the array is A R. Now from this, you have to form two permutations. Let's say the permutation is B and C. One of the permutations is one one two two three three, one one two two three three, and the other permutation is you can just put it on the like below it so that it will become more clear to you. So one one two two three three. This is B, and the other permutation is. Two, three, three, one, one, two. So one, one, two. Now, from this, what you can understand here is that if you take any sub array, like any contiguous sub array from this particular permutations that you have formed, like whatever elements come in both of these sub array should not be a permutation of each other. Okay. So what you can see that if I can see that one, two, two. And three, three, one are not permutations of each other. Okay, but let's say in this same example, if I form two sub arrays like this, one, two, three, one, two, three, and uh, one, two, two, and one, two, two, then one, three, three. Now in this, if I have taken let's say this sub array, then this sub array 
is a permutation of itself like if like this sub arrays b, b and this sub array is like sub array from b and c if you take out these two sub arrays then these two are permutations of each other like obviously they are same so this should not be possible like this should not be holding two for any i and j that you can form so you have to form two like permutations of the given array such that if you take out the same sub array from both b and c they should not be a permutations of each other okay so what you can like directly observe from here is that i can like like you can directly observe two three uh, observations from here the first the like the first thing is that okay if i want to like somehow divide it out the same number should not be coming below it okay so like if i because then i can make a sub array of size one and they are both are same and then it is bad so like the same number should not be coming behind like just below it so let's say if i have some number one two three then the other part should not be like one two three below it like like anything one two three should not be coming below like below it okay then if i can put like this one two three here then obviously the other one two three will come here and thus i have to somewhat sort it out also so sorting is also important okay sorting is somewhat important but what you can also observe here is that if the frequency of one number is greater than half then it becomes very tricky to like somewhat x like uh, like uh, what you can say like uh, rearrange them out i'll tell you how because see let's say i have five numbers or let's say i have uh, five numbers only and numbers are like this one 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 two now if you form any permutation of this then obviously the one will collide with each other okay because obviously the one will collide so like any permutation you can form let's say if i put like two and then i have to put one so that is bad and so the number of frequency of a number should be less than half so if i have like one 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 two then if I form any one, it will collide with it. Like if I put one, one, two, one, then obviously this one, one will collide with each other. So if the frequency of any number, like it's a, it is one, one, two, three, then it is fine because I can put one, one here and two, three here. Because if any number is having a frequency greater than half of the length of the array we have, then obviously that will collide in any other, uh, like uh, any other permutations I can form. And thus, what you can also observe from here is that now I've divided the array into two halves because, because now you're talking about half, it should not, should not be greater than half because then it will collide. If it is less than half, I can like form a, let's say a sorted array and then I can put one of the half here and the other half here and then this half here and this half here so that they will not collide with each other because this half, all the numbers are here and this half, all the numbers are here. And because there are no, like any number frequency is not equal to like half of the frequency of total numbers, obviously they will not collide. And uh, like whatever like sub array you will take, they will not collide with each other. And that's the overall logic here. Nothing much complicated. So I'll take it on to the code part now. So it will become more clear to you. So what I've done here is that we have made a map to the frequency of every number. Now there's also a condition if the like elements we have, if the frequency of all the elements like because you have find out the frequency, like how much time every element is occurring inside the array that we have. If the frequency of all the elements that we have is equal to one or two, like we have only one element. So obviously if we have all one elements, like the same elements, then obviously they will collide with, with any, like uh, with each other. Also, we have two type of elements in the array only, like two types. So obviously they will collide with each other because uh, if I have like two elements, one, two. So obviously like it will be like only two, one. So obviously they will collide with each other. Because like, let's say that because you cannot take the whole array because uh, it is also given that you cannot take the whole array in the problem. Like the I and J sub array cannot be the whole sub array. So you can only take the like any other sub array. So you have to also ensure that the total number of elements you have should be like greater than equal to two. It should be less than two. Okay. And thus, uh, because N is greater than equal to three because N is also like greater than equal to three. So you cannot have like three elements. So you always have three elements. So if you have always have three elements, if you have number of elements less than equal to two, then obviously like it will happen that uh, they will collide with each other. Because if you have like, let's say one, two, three. Now, if you put like three, then like if you put like three here, then obviously one and two. Okay. If you, if you even like try to put it, so number of different elements is three here. But if you put 
like there are different elements are two then obviously if you have like three to two any element will be having the the total number of frequencies greater than the half of the length of the total array so that is also bad so uh, if the total number of frequency that we have is less than equal to two the answer is obviously no else what i'll do here is that i will also check that any number any frequency should not be greater than half of the elements if it is also half of the elements then the answer is also no else the answer is that will sort the whole array will we will print the so the answer is that one of the frequent like one of the arrays that we have is the sorted array so one of the answers is so you can understand here with the first example like the last example actually gives you the total hint so you can the first answer is the sorted array and the second answer is that you can break the array into two halves so the like the second half is printed first and the first half is printed like the next so that we have done so we'll first print the first half from the half index till the end and then the second half is from zero till the half index and just print out the answer so that's the overall logic and the code part for all the four problems from the latest code forces cook off so thank you